Is I that kid getting strangled yeah. outside of what? What's happening? <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for inviting me around. No worries. Lee Duxbury, no footballing legend. We're live on Novel Meets podcast. Is it usually like this, by the way? It's all over I'm housing, garage, and everything. This this unbelievable shrine, <laughs> shrine which we're going to go around throughout the, uh, throughout yeah, the next yeah. 40, 45 minutes. It's not usually minutes. like this. So this goes out on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and highlights on YouTube. Right. Um, this episode is sponsored by Napoleon's Casino. Uh, who are very big fans of yours? Yeah, very Jane good. and Barry down at Napoleon's because they wanted to be part of this episode. So that's cool. So if you're watching, I've you got to get a good breakfast there in the morning. Yeah, you still can about two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Soak it all up. Yeah. yeah? Uh, these are my like I'd say favourite ones, really. Uh, you know that, that's uh, a goal I scored against Portsmouth. That's my first goal uh, we went into the championship after we went up. Right. Uh, I just like the picture. You know what I mean? Uh, the technique and what have you. And uh, I was saying uh, uh, to someone about the, you were just sort of talking about dedication. You know, the amount of times I just got a ball and went into playgrounds. Mm. You know what I mean? And when I was a young kid, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at uh, my local village playgrounds and just practiced left foot, right foot, volleying, half volleying, you know, repetition all the time. I think I, I developed much quicker from my age because my mates are older. You know what I mean? So I was playing against people two, three years older than me in the park yeah. all the time, competing with them. You know, there were myself and one of these lads up on there, Stevie Reap. Uh, uh, there were me and him at primary school together. We were having his 50th together. And he went playing cricket. Uh, he was captain at Keithley uh, yeah. Cricket Club for 10 years. You know what I mean? So, uh, but that was Bingley Juniors and four of them lads uh, went on to pro clubs. Yeah. Uh, myself and Mark Evans, the goalkeeper, uh, were at Bradford City. One of my best uh, pals, Peter Beatty, he went to Sheffield United, and Neil Vaughan, uh, uh, yeah, he was sent forward. You know what I mean? So uh, we had a really good uh, Bingley Juniors under 16, under 14, 15, 16 team there. And it wasn't just the under, the under 19s were brilliant, it was a massive education for me. Mm -hmm. But the better education were the reserves. So I was 16, 17, 18, and I was playing at Anfield, Goodison Park, Old Trafford, Main Road, you know, St. James's. I was actually playing on the pitch, but I was playing against, you know, Martin Keown, Norman Whiteside, John Barr. I was playing against these lads who were coming back from injury. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I will, I will, this is this is all my education. You, you learn, you learn quick. You know what I mean? To protect yourself and look after yourself. And uh, I always liked a little a bit of banter on, on pitch as well. And uh, we played at Everton, and Martin Keown were playing for Everton reserves, and uh, Norman Whiteside were uh, uh, in the uh, you know in midfield up against me, mm -hmm. and Martin Keown started slaughtering one of our young lads. So I. I uh, started calling him a few names, you know what I mean? I called him Moxie, right? And if you don't know who Moxie is, right. there were a television program called Olvis in Pet, mm -hmm. right? And one of the lads were called Moxie and he had bad skin, right? So <laughs> I, I started calling him Moxie, right? So anyway, he turns around, he snaps, he turns around, he says, How are you, little dickhead? He says, uh, How much are you on? I said, £27.50. <laughs> First year YTS. <laughs> uh, no, the white side says, fucking leave him alone, you dickhead. Like that, you know what I mean? Sticking up for me. Yeah. But I, I embarrassed him, you know what I mean? Anyway, being youngest, yeah. I was uh, taking the skips down. Uh, we had a, uh, on, on wheels, so I had two skips on, and there were a long corridor down t uh, to get to the uh, coach. Mm -hmm. So I'm pushing them, and then I look around the corner, and Brian Clough were coming down. Right, so I thought, well, I'd better just put it to the side, you know, and wait for Brian Clough to come past. So I did do. Anyway, he, he, walked, he walked past and then he clocked me. And then he got five yards away and comes, comes back and I'm sort of like, you know, just looking at him. And he comes up to me face like that, like real close. And he bell taps me, right? And he says, stop taking the piss out of my midfield players. And just walked off. <laughs> I mean, that shirt, 
is like a, that's a childhood memory. For me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- I was 1985. Started going to sit when I was probably about age six, 91, 92. Yeah. That was the first kind of final I ever went to 96. I remember going there. That means is that original? Well, not the original, but that's the actual contract. But I have to sit a contract. That's the first ever contract. Hundred pound. Is it hundred pound a week? And then you got your just that. Bonuses. How simple? Just that. Is that that were it? That were it. That was it. Yeah. So yeah. 90, what, March 1988. Um, it is with pleasure that in accordance with Football League Regulation 5, blah, 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 I'm right to advise you that when your training contract with this club expires on 30th of June, we are prepared to offer you a full professional contract. So that, that's, that's that. That is the one. That's what changed. That's, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. And in bit contract length, so it was what, two, two years? Basic. So what does is, what is this mean? So basic is so basic is what so you get what you get uh, each week. So, so ninety quid a week you're on. Ninety quid and then year, the year after one hundred and ten a week. So it's going up twenty quid. Yeah, and then you got like I wow. think uh, bonus if you go into first team you got appearance money uh, for twenty five quid appearance money and then bonuses is, is whatever the first team agreed. So it were like X amount of money at a point. That's ridiculous, and, isn't it? And stuff like that. Yeah, that so that would incredible. Be, that would be the very first. But I don't think I even got to end of that. And then touching on that, I mean, I obviously forgot. You played at Wembley with 1995 at Huddersfield, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, the previous year. Obviously, you to 96, but 95 at Huddersfield, that was with Warnock, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was uh, uh, like the, the lads were fantastic, you know. We, we had a, a couple of goal scorers up front. Ronnie Jepson uh, and Andy Booth, you know, they scored a lot yeah. of goals that season. I, th- I think they must have scored uh, over like 50 between them, even more, I think. You know, and we had a set way of playing different teams. We were very organised, you know, and uh, yeah, we got to the final against, uh, uh, we got to the semis against Br- uh, Brentford. Right. It went down penalties, and I took the fourth penalty, you know, and we, we scored that. They took the fifth, their captain Bates missed, and we had to, the fifth to score to, to, to get through. So yeah, and uh, with that one, uh, we played Bristol Rovers in the final. So you could imagine, two sets of teams with blue and white. Mm-hmm. So you walk out Wembley, 80,000 supporters, blue and white. All the stadium were just blue and white. It was just like, wow. It was just unbelievable, and that was the first time, you know, and it was, it was, it was fantastic because I missed a lot of things, you know what I mean, because it went like that the first time you, you played at Wembley, it just went, it, it was so quick, you know, and, and after it, I, I wish I'd have done that, I wish I'd have done this, but a year later, I went back with Bradford, so all the things I wanted to do, I did, you know, I got a bag of balls before we, we started warming up, right, and pinned them in, in, into the goal because guess what I wanted to do when I were a kid? I wanted to score at Wembley. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't had any chances either game to score, you know what I mean? But I got a bag of balls out and I was pinning balls in, into the goal before the Breakfast City game. And I can, I can just turn around and say, yeah, I scored at Wembley. Yeah. <laughs> there was no goalkeeper there. <laughs> it, won, it won a game. But just that kind of childhood, like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so. Sure. Uh, and I remember to take a little things, a black bin liner, to get as much memorabilia into my black bin liner to bring it on so I can have it for the rest of my life. Tell me you've got some Wembley memory. Have you got turf? Yeah, you have got some turf. <laughs> no, no, <yeah. laughs> I'm just so uh, grateful in my career that I played with some really, really quality players. Chris Waddle, you know, Chris it's Waddle, just. Though, I mean. <sighs> Even in training. Well, for England, obviously. Yeah. Like England, obviously, international and stuff. But the, he was 35 there. Yeah. Even in training, because it, uh, Wads like to laugh, you know. And if you you ended up playing eight aside, and you're playing against him, and he'd be chirping away, you know what I mean? And you think to yourself, right, next time you get the ball, Wads, I'm going to leave a bit on you, you know what I mean, to shut you up. Yeah. I was like 26. I was in my prime physically then he was 35 you know and I'm thinking right next time you get the ball you know and, and I, I just timed it because that was one of my strengths just timing it to win the ball but destroy the player as well you can't do it nowadays yeah you know but you could get away with it then but in training 
I thought I'd, do, I'd done that. He skipped the challenge, scored, or crossed, and they scored, and he'd be laughing at me on the floor. He was that good. He was just outstanding. I think the ball just stuck to his feet. Yeah. Oh, and it was great going out with him as well. We really? once went out in a Blackpool. I swear to God, there were like 15, 20 of us. And uh, you'd sort of like, you know, go to places and groups of lads. You no, you're not coming in. You're not coming in. So, oh, come on, we're, you know, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to call any trouble. And then you, I'd just go, Chris Waddles with this. And you could see all the bouncers looking down the line. You know, that's Chris Waddles. Come on then, come on. <laughs> he used to get us in, get us in everywhere. He used, nice. But there were, there were ones, uh, I think uh, it, were, it was at Blackpool as well. He was coming fur, further on, but we got we got to this, uh, it was a variety show thing where they had dancing girls and stuff like that, but uh, there were men dressed up as girls. Yeah, no, I've forgotten what it's called now. Anyway, we got to the front and uh, being captain, I said, look, you know, there's a group of lads, we're all in fancy dress, you know, we aren't going to cause any trouble. And there are even women bouncers on the, mm -hmm. on the thing. So look, you're not coming in. He said, look, we're not going to cause any trouble. Anyway, massive 40 foot Christmas tree reception, right? So the reception, door there, Christmas tree on your left. A couple of lads pay, uh, paid in, one of the lads were just, just outside Christmas tree. <laughs> One of the one of, one of the lads decided I won't name names. One of the lads decided to rugby tackle the lad into the Christmas tree. And the Christmas tree fell out of the reception. I was just looked at these bouncers. No, it's not happening. So, you know, because I always said we've got three plans. Plan A, go out. We'll probably change it a little bit at half time. But if we're chasing the game, you know, last twenty minutes we would go for plan B. You know, so everybody were organised and everybody knew how to try and get result out of it. But the education I had, North West, you could imagine the teams over there. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we were playing against, a quick story about when we were at, at Liverpool, uh, we, we, we'd sort of like, uh, we, they wanted to play at us because they heard about us playing at Carrington and what have you, so yeah. we, we played over there. And uh, that's this is when Kennedy I believe was something, something to do with it. And you remember just coming down, a lad just sat, said, Ducks, how are you? Yeah. yeah. It won at Longbottom Twins. Well, he's a massive Liverpool fan, so he knew I was going over uh, there right. and, and playing behind closed doors. So he says, Look, I've got you a, a Liverpool top. If you see Kenny Daglish, can you sign it? So I says, Yeah, no, I, I took, it, took it with me. We were on coach. So we play, played the game and they were behind us. <coughs> anyway, we, fin we finished the game. I've never been starstruck in my life. You know what I mean? I, I, I've, met, I've met loads of singers and yeah. actors and this, that and the other. And I just get on with, you know, no matter. Well, you've been seeing Gaza, Lineker. Yeah, 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 just get, yeah. On, just get on with them. Anyway, so I guess this top after, after and he, he's, walking, he's walking up and I've got this top. And I've never met him before, so I sort of like went up to him with a pen and the, the shirt for, to get it signed for longing. So I went, and he laughed. He just, he just like, yeah. He like looked at me like, <laughs> and I just went. So he just signed it. He thought, oh, poor lad, poor lad. Oh my god. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I met him again and we played him at League Cup and uh, uh, I met him and he sat next to me in boot room so we had a good chat, we had a good chat there but we, we played another time at uh, uh, at uh, Liverpool uh, in the training ground, Melwood in it and uh, it were in Rafa were there in Sammy Lee oh, right. and we were, I was looking at this right back, uh, there were uh, Jimmy Carragher were keeping fit because we were in the national duty uh, he, he wasn't doing it anymore, so they were a match. And our owner says, Dutch, can you get over and have a look at this right back? So I went over behind closed doors, watched this right back and what have you. He wasn't ready. He, he, he had a man's body, but he was still a boy upstairs. You right. know what I mean? He wasn't, he wasn't ready. So after the game, uh, I'm sat down because he says, Oh, don't go. And I thought, 
I was just going to have a chat with under 23 manager, I don't know who it was. So I'm just waiting around in reception. Then all of a sudden, this woman says, oh, can you just follow me? So she went into, uh, towards this door, opened this door. It was Rafa and Sammy Lee, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Maybe the Liverpool fan as well. So I sat down, I've got a coffee, what have you, brought a coffee over. And then he started, he started talking about this right back, right? And I'm trying to listen to him and I'm thinking, what's his accent? <laughs> you know? Because I'd already made up, but I was, it's half Scouse, half Spanish. Yeah. And they were like, I can't understand the word they're saying. <laughs> and I'm looking at Sammy Lee and I think Sammy Lee knew I couldn't understand the word he was saying. <laughs> but he were like, you his voice? Bizarre. No, I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to try. <laughs>